Hello, my name is Choco, and you're watching A Hero's Guide. Too much Disney? Alright, well anyways, first thing I want to need to talk about when I go over, over heroes is uh, leadership. So the top 16 people with leadership are eligible for hero. And each faction can have a maximum of 6 heroes, except for pirate faction, which can only have uh, 3 heroes. Alright, so... Uh, this is the spreadsheet on how you can get leadership. So here's going to be all of your dailies. Uh, thumbsing up another player. Follow Hiram City. Uh, a PvP kill gives you 10. Uh, CR uh, gives you 20 together. Uh, GR gives you 20 as well. Aleska is 15. Aegis 20. Wellsung 20. Alciona, it's 10 uh, each time. You can do 3 of them a day. And then from other players, thumbsing you up, uh, that's the maximum of 50 a day. And it's uh, five per, per thumbs. And then, um, if you really want to farm leadership, there are some repeatable things. Um, every time the, the Yenister and Cinder go to war, you can get 15 from that quest. Anthon gives you 15, and Jolomin and Glenn gives you uh, 7 per or 21 altogether. And then you can do a couple extra things, like your blue salt bonds, the ones you can do at the hero soul, you turn those in, you get one request red dragon doesn't happen every day but you can get five from that and then abyssal attack also doesn't happen every day and you can get 20 leadership from that all right so the first bonus from being a hero is you get a really nice cloak uh it's a very very tanky cloak and i can show you how tanky it actually is if you look right here my toughness alone gives me 50.6 percent damage reduction pvp if I take it off, I'm at down to 28.6. So, it is quite a big jump in uh, defensive stats. The next thing, uh, heroes have a quest right here. They have three quests that they have to do. And if they complete all three quests, and they also do 100 hero calls, and they can only do 5 hero calls a day, and uh, 4,000 leadership, then you get a gem. And the gem is a uh, ghost in your helmet. And it gives you 300 toughness. And uh, it's a very expensive gem. It normally sells for like 20,000 from what I'm used to. Sometimes more than that. Um, but it is an extra bonus of, of being a hero. Alright, so next thing heroes have. Um, you have flags that can turn his own to peace or war. Then this one you can change either one. And zones that can be turned are going to be um, like Carcass, Halsey. Hell Swamp, Sand Deep, and over here you got Rookborn, Windscore, Ernor, and Hazla. You cannot change uh, Yenister or Sender, and you can't change Aegis or Wellsong, you can't change Reedwind, you can't change Diamond Shores. Now, the benefit for changing things to War, it's not really that great to be honest. You can change it uh, like WHM to War, for example, if you want to go farm and have a better loot drop rate. Uh, you can do the same thing with EHM. Sometimes people save their flags during uh, big big reset raids. That way uh, each raid can fight each other. And then down here, if you want to uh, turn one of these zones to war, uh, it actually summons a boss. So sometimes people will save their flags for that. Then if you're running packs, you can turn things to peace if you want. Alright, next up, heroes have uh, these raid flares right here. Meaning I can summon everyone in my raid. I can't summon my co-raid, but I can summon all 50 people in my own raid. And once I make a raid, there will be an extra uh, button right here. And I press it and it starts summoning everyone. And it's a channel, and people have to be out of combat. They don't have to, can't have packs out you know, on their back or anything like that. So, And they can take the flare in your location. Alright, so next we have uh, the statue here. Now, this statue... Um, is, is built by having cargo packs. Uh, the hero has to put the first five packs in, and the last five in, and then the rest of the faction, or doesn't matter, anyone can put the uh, 100 packs in, in the, in the middle. But the hero has to be the one who do, has to do the first five and last five. Now, whenever you have this statue built, uh, you can get a blessing from it. And they made some changes recently. Uh, it costs five uh, stone brick to get it. And you'll get this buff. Um, it's it's really good. Skill damage, receive damage reduction, limit speed, production time, and recall time reduction. 
All right, so next over here, we have this flag. And this flag allows me to use the hero calls for mobilization orders. And I can only use a hero call five times a day. And it's a one hour cooldown between each one. And there's also an ability called Strength of the Faction. Right now it's on cooldown. Uh, it's a three and a half hour cooldown, I believe. And while it's up, it lasts for 30 minutes. And everyone can come grab it over here. And so what this buff does is uh, loot drop increase, XP gain, and then it gives you PvE damage and PvE damage reduction. And it only costs uh, 150 labor to, to have the buff on you. Alright, so next thing with heroes is going to be the castles. Uh, first thing I'd, I'd like to mention is the uh, taxes. So castles generate money through doing the warehouse event and just uh, naturally doing the your dailies here. Now, your Aeronord hero, which is your top hero, he gets to set the uh, tax that the heroes receive. And right here on both factions, you can see that it's 30%. Normally, it starts out at 10%, but the Aeronord hero can increase the taxes, um, which means the heroes get more money and um, the casual pugs get less money by doing this. And the payout of uh, the castles is whenever the siege happens, uh, whenever the siege gets won or lost. Also at the castles, you're going to have to kill a tower here. And then inside of the castle area, there's going to be a pack, which a hero has to run out here to purify it. And then it spawns all these mobs. And these mobs have very good drop rate on uh, stones you need to upgrade your cloak with. Alright, so next thing I want to talk about is uh, the mining event. So, each uh, territory has its own like mining location, and if you look over here, you'll see all these nodes here. Now, typically you go down the list, I mean you go down the uh, down the line, and you want to get all like mine until you get the abundant ones, and then each little pocket um, has different uh, types of things in it. Now, what people are normally after is going to be the copper and the gold ore. Eventually, you'll be using uh, copper and gold ore to make uh, silver and gold keys. Now, whenever you're, you're mining these, it actually gives you a trade pack. And the trade pack has about like 70, um, 70 ore in it. And you can either put the pack down immediately um, and break it and get like uh, half of the amount from it. Or you can run it over to the castle. Uh, for the full amount. You would have to take the ore packs all the way to over here to uh, get the full amount of ore from it. Alright, so next we have this warehouse here. And this warehouse is where you make the majority of your money. Alright, so the warehouses can be activated uh, the day before siege. And the goal here is to take packs out of this warehouse and run it to the faction base over here and turn it in. And normally people either go like through this route here, or they'll go around here too. Alright, so next I want to talk about these wyverns. For each castle, uh, your faction heroes can get one dragon. So a maximum of four, or technically wyverns is what they're called. Uh, you can get four of them. So uh, they have a fire breath on them, and they are pretty good at flying too. So if you look here... Um, he uses the flat fire breath on my battle clipper, and I have Ezzy's buff and I have Beast buff, which actually makes it to where my uh, my battle clipper doesn't die easily to the fire breath. And we'll have archers uh, positioned, and we'll make sure that we um we sniped him out of sky, and we'll use like other gliders like eagle glider and uh, rocket glider to shoot the heroes out of the sky. Alright, so next up, I want to talk about the Sieges. The Sieges, um, that's where you get the payout from the castles. You know, either if you win or lose type thing, or technically whoever wins. But even the loser does uh, get some money from the castles. So, if you look here, the heroes get three extra abilities inside of this, um, inside of the, inside of the Siege. So this first one is going to be a Freeze. It's like a deep freeze, everyone, and it's like a petrify. They can't really take damage. It's five seconds. 
Um, so it allows you to rate to like position or retreat or what, whatever you need to do, right? But each hero gets this. The next one is going to be an attack buff. And it lasts, uh, lasts a little bit of time. And then the next one is a defense buff. And the goal for these is you want your heroes, because you have six heroes, you can basically rotate these and have them up all the time. Now, if you are the Siege Commander, um, which means like you are the leader of the Siege Raid, you get an extra ability, and it's called Commander's Blast. Now, Commander's Blast, it looks like a Searing Rain, except it's massive. It goes all over the entire... It, it is a massive AoE. And basically, meter, meters come down, it's 30-minute cooldown, and it does like 20k plus damage per hit. So, a lot of times, like if you get hit by two of them, you die. Uh, it's basically a Raid Wipe ability. And um, each of the commanders, the Pirate Commander... It's one, the East Commander and the West Commander, they all get one. On top of the extra abilities you get here, you also get a really big health buff. Um, it's about a 20,000 health buff uh, while you're in Siege, just because you're a hero. Alright, and finally I want to talk about the special god abilities that you can get here. So, this one for example, um, I have three charges on it. Uh, it lasts for 24 hours, the 5 minute cooldown between each use, and it is a 75 meter radius that makes everyone invincible. Alright, and here's what the ability looks like while it's actually in use. Our character flies up, you can see the massive circle all around us, and everyone here is invincible to CC and damage. Alright, and now how you get the those uh, special hero abilities is going to be here at the Circle of Authority. Alright, so first off, um, there's, gonna, there's a mini-boss that spawns in Garden. Uh, he spawns at War. Um, he's a very strange respawn time, but he can spawn at the beginning of every War. And you can tell if he's up, because you want to actually be in Garden while it's conflict before it goes to War, because you'll get a message... In your chat box down here you won't get a big pop-up you'll just get a small message that says that he spawned so then you have to go find him so here's all of his spawning locations that you could run around and go look for him at now once you kill him it's it, he's not too hard he, uh you can do it with like three people at like 15 gig gear score or lower if you have a healer i mean it's a I mean, it's not it's really not that bad but anyways once you kill him two hero powers Will be available here at the circle of authority and it does announce everyone that's in garden that he has been killed so people will run over here and this ability here this one is shatagons so it lines up with this one this is the one i have to channel to get the power then there's tahutas we've tried this one out it's like a whirlpool um then these other ones we haven't really had uh time to uh, test them but we did kind of learn some things like towards the end so, um, whenever the mini boss dies, two hero powers get sent here, and only one hero per faction can get one. So, for example, one east hero can get it, one west hero can get it, or you can just camp it until like it goes to like conflict, I mean, until the war's over and whatever, right? Now, there's also another power that spawns somewhere on the map. For example, I've seen the Kiros power over here. I've also seen another power spawn over here. It's a very small orb and you have to like know what you're looking for to see it. Um, so like I have never seen the Kiro's power um, spawn here at the thing. They've only been on the outskirts. So essentially what it means is there's two hero powers that are here and then a third one that's not here. So each fashion can have a, a hero power for the day. Now these only last uh, 24 hours, um, three charges on it, and uh, it's a 5 minute cooldown between each charge. You can use them in like Calciona, you can use them at like major role boss events, you know, you know however you want to use them basically. Alright, so I hope this helps everyone out um, that are kind of new and are interested in the hero. Um, that last part with the, the hero of powers, not a lot of people know that. 
not a lot of people have even seen that map or even know that, that the boss or the abilities exist. Um, but I really hope this helps everyone out uh, for the future, and we'll see more knowledgeable heroes. All right, I'll see you.